um, so who I am, I, I'm in position. Um, uh, I'm going to start off as a, um, a uh, uh, CEO of a, of a shoe company and um, starting up a factory. My background is an MD, um, and I'd like to explain because people think I make shoes that I must be a podiatrist. I'm not a podiatrist. I'm, I, I got my MD from Harvard Medical School. Then I uh, got a, did a residency in a field called physical medicine and rehabilitation. So that's my specialty. So I'm actually really excited about all the prosthetic innovations. I worked with a fellow by the name of Hugh Herr. Um, uh, we worked together when we were in Boston. He's also a double amputee. Um, but I'm interested in, in, the, whole, in the whole body. Um, so this is, this is the company, uh, Osh, Oshoes. And I try to keep a blog. Our website is actually pretty informative. I tend to write about a lot of different things. So um, if you want to kind of just dig into old blogs, I have. Oh, it's not on. It's fine. I did, maybe I just need to hold it closer. Okay, sorry about that. Should I start over? No, I'm not. <laughs> um, all right, so, so this, this is the, my company. And um, how I got into shoes was really, uh, it's, it's really just by studying walking posture um, for about 20 years. I'm, I'm, I am, somebody said their age, I think it's a good thing. My, I'm 53. Um, it means I've done a lot. I've had multiple careers. That's also, you think about that. Um, I, I tell my daughters, you don't need to worry about training for, thinking about what you're gonna be for the whole, your whole rest of your life. You can have multiple careers as you go. I've had a few. Um, so I did, after medical school, I practiced, but I, I studied for 20 years um, uh, posture, gait, including <coughs> the effects of shoes on the forces and loads. Um, again, not just in the foot, but on, on the rest of the body. Um, and then I found out that all these shoes are crap, okay? So, <laughs> um, and, and, and on their way to a landfill, and not sustainable, and awful, and just, and not healthy, okay? <coughs> so, I'll get to the, how do we figure this out? Um, in 2009, I published a paper called The Effect of Running Shoes on Lower Extremity Joint Torques. Joint torques is how we measure the pressure, the loads on joints, okay? And what I found, this was not a subtle finding, I found that running shoes increase the forces related to arthritis by, we have 54%, 36%, and 38% compared to barefoot, not subtle. If we look at the, let's see, now I don't have the data on this, this was 2009. Um, Born to Run came out, it's just that time, and this paper helped to say, oh my gosh, shoes are awful. Um, but there was more <laughs> to it than that. Um, it wasn't just that paper. Um, um, and, and, and I wasn't ever a fan of barefoot running um, or bare, barefoot. I think shoes are very good, it's just they need to be redesigned. Um, so what they said was, it, uh, the press was that running shoes cause more stress than high heel shoes. That's not exactly true. Um, but that is how my research started. I started looking at high heel shoes. We had a sophisticated gait laboratory with uh, uh, motion markers on the body, um, you know, the video cameras arranged around the room and you get a 3D image of, of, of the motion. Then we have force plates embedded in the ground and the combination of those two things with the force, the force plates and the motion cameras, we can then measure these forces, these torques. I'll explain a little bit. Um, and then we get just oodles, oodles of data. And it's like, what the heck do you do with all this data, right? But that was, that was what I, that's what I was doing. I was looking at all of this data. I was looking for key, key things that are meaningful and meaningful maybe medically, okay? One of them is that knee osteoarthritis, knee arthritis and osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis. Um, is a big deal. Our rehabilitation hospitals, it, it takes over of our physical medicine and rehabilitation <coughs> practice, it's knee arthritis. Um, you know, other things get a lot of press, uh, heart disease, all that, but knee osteoarthritis causes more physical disability than any other singular disease in the elderly. It, it's a big deal. And, it's, it, it, and here I found, oh my gosh, this one graph 
It's called the coronal knee torque. It's how much load is on the part of the knee where we get arthritis was increased. That's a solid line compared to barefoot. So I saw that in stiletto heels. Uh, this was back in 1998, and it was kind of big news. And sort of all the press, you know, picked up on this, oh my gosh, high heel shoes are not just bad for your feet, but they're bad for your knees, the rest of your body. Um, did a full segment, um, uh, 2020 segment, um, ABC, and, um, and, it, and it's funny because it, there was a woman that they, they kind of had me against this, this woman who said, I am not giving up my high heels, <laughs> I don't care. Um, but here I'm trying to explain. So your body weight force um, it comes up on the inside part of your, um, uh, of your knee. When you walk, but even when you just stand, that force always just comes up on the inside of the knee and gives a little bit of a twisting force or um, a, a torque. And that's what puts the load all on the inside part of the knee, is, which is where we all get arthritis. And we all get it. As long as we live long enough, and we are, we are all getting it. Women just get it twice as often. And so I've said, oh my gosh, could it be footwear? Um, and so then that was just stilettos. And so I dug in, I did a little more, said, oh my gosh, you can wear a wide-based heel. A wide-based heel um, does the same thing. Doesn't matter whether it's wide or if it's a stiletto, you get an increase. Um, and then even moderate heel shoes, okay? So all those dance goes, all that, you know, any kind of, of, of wedge, anything increases those forces. And I like to say, you know, thinking about comfort, comfort in the foot, um, I, I will say <laughs> that stilettos actually might be better than uh, a comfortable um, uh, heeled shoe because uh, at least with the stiletto, a woman's not gonna wear it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and arthritis develops over a lifetime. It's really a, a lifetime of standing, walking, you have these these increased pressures, okay? So, and 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 it's not just high heel shoes, okay? It, it, it's it's just any any heel elevation. So, all the shoes in this room, probably except mine, have <laughs> some sort of heel elevation in them, and that will increase those will increase those loads. Um, <coughs> then, hmm. <coughs> so any heel elevation doesn't matter. Cushioning in it. Um, I, any kind of technical device, it doesn't matter, any heel elevation is going to increase those forces. Also, an arch support, even an arch support. So any little bit of arch support, it affects the way the force comes up from the body up in, in, into uh, the center of mass, which is that, that, ground, reaction, that uh, ground reaction force, and alters that, um, that force. So arch supports, and we did a study with just the smallest Spanko uh, uh, insert with very little, very little arch support, and that significantly increased it. Not to the extent, okay, of a high heel shoe, but by 5%. Okay, and we're talking, again, over a lifetime. Um, so anyway, so I've published a lot of papers, and and, um, um, and so I don't know what to do with them. So these, this is the wall of our factory. Um, <laughs> they're all, they're all up there. Um, and, uh, you know, and I and I did. I was doing all of this, all this research, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, things aren't changing. I'm not, I'm not changing the industry. I, I, I know all this stuff, but I really have to. Um, <coughs> uh, and, and it certainly got a lot of press, but is it being integrated into into shoes? Not really. Um, <coughs> Oh, other than then there was a, the barefoot running movement, but it's like no, it's just it, it, they need to be redesigned. And um, and what I think about you know being redesigned, this 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 graph. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'll go into the uh, details here. Just this arrow right here. These little arrows. When you first hit the ground, there's this impact, this little blip. Okay, this little blip. And this little blip is what gets all the attention in athletic shoe industry. That that causes injury, okay? And that we need to do all the stuff. We got to cushion that impact to make a difference. To um, to reduce the loads on the knees. To to re and it's only so, is it to re to reduce the loads because um, that it's good for your joints if we cushion cushion impact, right? And you think, oh yeah, 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 cushion impact. Well, it's all wrong. That little blip 
with the forces. Now these torques, that is what relates to the, to the development of osteoarthritis, okay? So when you apply this, these forces <laughs> in that part of the knee, varus torque, that is when you get arthritis. At that beginning, um, at that initial impact, that, that blip is very small. It's later in stance or when you are just standing, okay? So we don't need impact. We develop arthritis by just standing, okay? So just because that's how the forces are. So that blip means nothing. In fact, that blip is probably good. We're learning that, you know, that blip is just the right um, uh, frequency to maintain <coughs> bone density, for example, osteoporosis. But that, that blip in, in, in astronauts for preserving um, uh, bone density in space, that's good, but it's those later big forces. That's, that's the problem. So our current shoes, they provide this cushioning at impact, but they really provide negligible compliance, compliance at the time when the ground reaction force reaches its peak. So it's, 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 it's that bigger part of the curve that we're, that we're interested in. The foot does a really wonderful job of providing compliance. In walking and in running, this, this dip, this dip down, this is, as the, as the forces are going up, the, the foot is complying. It's, it's going down and up in perfect unison with when those forces are, um, uh, are, are at, at their peak. And you can see it um, in walking. There's basically two humps in walking. There's one in running. And it's really that, that, second, that second peak, peak that you <coughs> see the, the compliance on the, uh, on, on the walking. So this is just some 3D images of uh, or gait analysis. This is the moment of that impact in running. <coughs> Look, it's this tiny little, tiny little ground reaction force, which is that little, that little yellow line. But it's here. That's that's when it all happens. Okay. So that's when we really need to try to protect the the body. So the shoes of the future and and what we're what we're making. Um, they don't cushion impact. So think of all that cushioning, all that foam, EVA, all that non-sustainable stuff that's filling up our landfills, EVA. Um, we don't want to do that. Instead, we want something that is responsiveness, not garbage marketing responsiveness, but is truly, truly responsive, um, meaning spring-like, not dampening. We need the spring-like. And that will probably be a completely uh, new, smarter, and hopefully recyclable material, um, and rely on on, on on a more sophisticated um, design and manufacture, and a completely different mode of manufacturing. Because you know, you, 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 uh, most of the manufacturing is EVA. It's a very different process than using. Um, <coughs> what I'll, I'll talk about the thermoplastic materials, um, <coughs> and so this all kind of got me. And, and, and again, shoe companies weren't listening to me. Um, I said, darn it, you know, I'm just gonna build our own factory. Um, so, and this, so I wrote this article, uh, which I've seen, I found um, earlier this year, uh, the race to build a better shoe, which I, I, I talk, in this talk, everything that I'm talking about is in that article that I wrote back in April, and it's still um, online, I think, the complete article for free um, through uh, IEEE, if you just Google it. So um, set up a factory, um, uh, I made that sign, which you'll see how I made that sign in a second. Um, this is the factory as you walk in, um, and, and, and this is the uh, chair from my university that was given to me as for being um, uh, a uh, full tenured professor and, and chair. It, they didn't expect that I was gonna put this in, in the factory, so I love that that's the first thing that you see when you, when you walk in. Um, and this is the shoe. This is the shoe that, that we make. I'll, I'll talk about it, um, but then the manufacturing. So basically, and it's all in the sole, I have a, I have a pair. If uh, anyone's a size nine and a half woman, you can, you can try it on. Um, but basically, it's the outside part of the sole. When you land, you land on the outside, or at this, how you stand, and the outside needs to be fairly firm, okay? And it's really over on this side of the shoe that you need that compliance. As you roll over 
And when all that weight, when I'm showing the, that big, the big hump, this is really when all your weight is over on the medial, on the inside part of your foot, and especially on the forefoot. So we have all this, this compliance, the springiness over on the inside part of the foot. So how do we do it? So you gotta have a material that's not just a, hmm. You know, you look at our shoes and go, hmm, it just looks <coughs> like a solid piece of rubber or something like that. But it's actually a lot more sophisticated than that in that it has this sort of differential zone as you go across from the, from the lateral outside of the foot to the inside. So how, did, how do you make that? Um, so I, I got lots of equipment. One is a, 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 a CNC milling machine and, um, and learned how to, how to uh, program it and work it and made jigs and all that for it. Um, but we're making, what I'm doing is making these molds. Um, this is our, our sole mold. And they've got these little vents in it. So whenever you do inject, and it's injection molded, uh, whenever you injection mold, there's like a certain flow that, that occurs. And so I learned that if I could get the vent uh, going in a certain direction, and I put fiber, we put car carbon fiber, <coughs> a bunch of different stuff in, in this material. It's a combination of TPU, PVEX, uh, uh, Expansel, uh, which is a cell that expands, um, uh, two different kinds of blowing agent, uh, a little something that makes it um, uh, more abrasion resistant. So I, it's something like 12 different ingredients. You add it all up. But anyways, but you can also sort of get a directional flow according to where you put the vents in, into the mold. Um, uh, so these are all the, different, all the different materials that we get. All, of course, uh, thermoplastic or, or um, in pellet form. And then this injection molding machine. So this injection molding machine uh, was fun. I, I was talking to somebody, you know, like a lot of our equipment. This, this machine was, was um, resurrected from Detroit, Michigan. Used to make some car part, but it's a special kind of injection molding machine that allows us to uh, do this uh, insert mold. Um, and it's it just perfect. It's perfect for making these, these shoe sole molds. Um, but the, uh, the injection where the, uh, the port is, you see I'm drilling into the, in, into the sole where the, where the port is, where the injection port is. So it's, it's coming in into the sole. And, um, and again, you can see with the vent, so everything is sort of flowing in this, in this direction. And then you can see it on the, on, on the molding machine. Um, and it's a rotary table, so we do right, right shoe, then the left shoe. Um, but the injection port, you can actually see the little vents as they, as they go out. So everything just flows. So when you take a sole, you can actually cut it and you look at it under the microscope. You see these little carbon fiber pieces go making these like little springs around these air cells. And it, and it looks almost like a, a cookie. And it's so like a, it's more um, um, dense on the lateral side than it is on, on, the, on the medial side. Um, and we make all the different, all the molds um, and inserts for all the different sizes. And we are now up to six colors, six colors. So we've been selling shoes um, since 2011. Um, this new, they call it the Levita style. That's like, th this was, um, uh, took a few years to get to this shoe, which is, I think that this is it. Um, hard to, for me to improve on, except I'll talk about, yes, of course we are, try to do something else. Um, but uh, for now, this is, this is what we have. And uh, there've been, we've, been have, we've had these now for, mm, let's see, a year and a half and incredibly popular uh, because it, it's really lightweight. I, I started off with a really, as you can imagine, something very, um, it, it was heavy, it was this carbon fiber, kind of like a whole spring. Um, it, it was great biomechanically. This is actually works better biomechanically, um, but my prior version, it was just heavy <coughs> and not really attractive. Um, uh, people like this. This is really, they're easy to wear. Um, and, um, uh, you know, at first I thought, okay, can we get, you know, how is this gonna stack up against a high heel shoe? Um, but there's so many women, we have gotten sort of this following of women who buy OSH, who are really passionate about, um, I want what's 
best, what's healthy, and it's okay. I don't, I don't need to have my high heel. I don't, you know, I, I'm very happy with, with this style, and so we're going with it. So we've got, we've got our black. Black is probably our most uh, um, highest selling shoe. Um, and then we just came out with the Sogoro because I thought we'd have we should have these like bright colors, but um, everybody likes the bright colors. But then they go to buy the charcoal, and then um, and, the, and then the Sogoro is our is our second one. Um, anyways, so, and so we, a lot of I just we see that there's there's a lot of women that really, and, and I should mention that we only make women's shoes, be, at least for now, because kind of all my research started with women. Um, uh, we women have twice as much issues, um, and not just knee osteoarthritis. This really, even though we're measuring knee osteoarthritis, the way those forces go, it affects it affects the hip and the back as well. Um, and, and we women have have these issues twice as often. I really do believe it's because of differences in our footwear. Um, so that's what we're that's what we're doing first. So uh, women like this this whole this whole uh, uh, you know simple. Um, you know, that we don't have a lot of junk on our shoes, like a typical athletic shoe. Maybe guys like that, I don't know, but women really like the sort of the, the, simple, the simple design, which I did, by the way. So I did, did, did the design. I learned CAD, I uh, learned uh, Rhino, um, we we're talking about peace plans and Grasshopper, now I'm using Autodesk Fusion 360 and working with Autodesk, uh, really tremendous CAD, CAD program. Um, but uh, keeping it simple, right? So, oh, these are these are our pellets uh, that we use for the injection molding, and so with doing this injection molding and becoming sort of an expert in injection molding and all these thermoplastic materials, it's really become sort of a natural for us to start exploring um, 3D printing, which we've been now doing for the last year, um, and building our own 3D printers because uh, we have all the tools to make our own 3D printers, so why not? Um, so this is a 3D printer that, that, that we built. Again, because those thermoplastics, all that stuff we've been using in the soles, it's the same stuff. It's just, it's basically the same um, as, uh, as a filament, although we're looking at the filament, looking at the injection molding machine, and thinking, hmm, you know, maybe we could do something a little bit different where we could just inject, uh, I'm sorry, 3D print directly from pellets. Um, so, this is our water jet saw, which um, is very handy. I, I have the only water jet saw in, uh, in, in Charlottesville and a large part of Virginia. Um, so, um, but that allows us with that, we can, we can cut a lot of different, all the forms, all the molds, uh, that in addition to the, to the uh, CNC milling machine. Um, so like I said, we've got, and then we got an injection molding machine now too, so we, we can really make anything um, and uh, besides shoes, and so so we've been making these these three D printers, and uh, this is just a little. Um, uh, this is actually pretty small. This is the um, part of the printer, but that's our uh, extruder that extrudes directly from from pellets, and um, so with that we can just basically take that bin full of my little secret little formula. It's not so secret. Um, and, and put it directly into, um, into the hopper and experiment with, with lots, of different lots of different materials. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. Um, I should mention, so I, I, I was a professor at the University of Virginia. I was the department chair of physical medicine and rehab there before I just <coughs> left five years ago. But I stayed uh, close with a lot of my colleagues from all over the country. I collaborate with a lot of people. Um, on research grants. We just got a, 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 a grant from the National Science Foundation to look at um, a, a, a gate, basically a little mini gate lab that we would put inside the shoe. Um, that's years away. Um, but I'm always working with students and, 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 and different researchers from, from all over and um, um, would love to talk to any of you about, about the work that you're doing. Um, we have students, uh, worked with the mechanical engineering aerospace. I had adjunct faculty appointment in uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering and had a lot of engineering students. This year, I've got architecture students, so um, who are really fascinated with the, with, the, with the building of the 3D printers. And so, 
that's what we do. We have, um, like I said, our Levita um, soul, and um, soon we think we'll have a um, uh, a uh, a three D printed soul um, pretty soon, and um, we have sort of this growing we call them Osher's uh, database of, of women who just love Osh. Um, we have to make a decision at some point whether we're going to go into men's shoes. It's funny because all the women, they don't want to have men's shoes. And, uh, but, you know, I get guys walk in our factory and just get mad that we, <laughs> we don't make men's shoes. So we'll see where, where that goes. Um, and, um, and, and that's it. Time for one or two questions. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to ask a question to Dr. Casey? Eugene. Uh, well, I think when, I, when did you start the uh, commercial operation, actually? In, in 2011, is it? Uh, yeah, I guess 2009 it was when I left uh, uh, academics and then set up the factory. I, I, there's a little bit in there, you know, when I said, you know, that, uh, you know, shoe companies didn't care. It, it's actually not altogether true. I was working with New Balance for a little bit. Uh, and right. Did you, I was asking, did you work with any brands? So, uh, are you still working with them or? No, no. So because just they, completely. Because you wanted to do, a, do it on your own or because they didn't, uh, they didn't accept your uh, philosophy? Yeah, I don't think it completely accepted everything <coughs> I wanted to do. Um, New Balance, um, so, so I have a patent on the sort of the general shape <coughs> of, of that, yeah, you know, that compliance thing. But so New Balance, you know, they wanted to just, you know, buy the patent, get that patent. Right, right, right. And, um, and I said, no, you know, it's a lot more than that, you know. Yeah. You've got to make a completely flat. I don't want any arch support. And so I said, there's no arch support, okay. Um, if you want arch support, you put an orthotic in, but nothing, nothing baseline in the shoe. Um, what else? Uh, flat. That. Um, oh, and then I didn't talk about. There's what you know. Uh, there's a crown, the side to side crown in 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 in, in the shoe. Okay. Uh, that. Uh, uh, you know, I I couldn't get anyone to. Maybe some of you know why there is a crown. Because I was, you know, oh, so it's something to do with the, you know, the comfort of the molded to the foot to give sort of. Uh, anyways, biomechanically, it's not good, because again, it affects those those forces from medial to lateral. So I said, no, I, I want it completely flat. And I was told, well, you know, I'll show you. You got to have some curvature just by the, you know, the attachment of the upper and all that kind of stuff. But um, but I didn't want any of that. I wanted it completely different. Which wasn't going to fill in. Are your shoes for running or also for normal walking? I, everything. So I, I encourage us not just running. You know, you don't get <laughs> arthritis just from running. It's from. It, I just want people to wear, like something like this, for as much of the day as possible. That's okay. it. it. Doesn't matter what you do. It's Nigel from Feet also. Ah uh, yes, Nigel from Feet. Fascinating talk. Uh, really good to see the validation about TPEs, um, which we'll talk about a bit later. Um, I have a question about your three D printing platform. Are you using that for actual final manufacturing, or are you using it just to um, sort of reiterate your designs and then final production? You're going to build a mold and take that risk. No, so yeah, production, production, absolutely. Production. So that's what we're that's what we're working toward, um, uh, the production, um, because I think I think it's feasible. I, I you know I mean I think it's I think very it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, I think we'll need to get any other questions before we get. Oh, sure. Just quickly, oh, how oh. important was it that you built your own machines in building your own machines for three and making something that was designed by the people? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I think, like, I, yeah, I get, I get so into you know, making the machines and the tools and the. I, I don't I don't know like what you know sort of what comes together but you know I'm constantly thinking about my research as I'm you know building anything and I, I many times like I'm, I'm thinking right now this extruder this you know silly extruder and the plans and the my CAD model for that just as much as I'm thinking about the um, uh, as much as the shoes so I, I, I don't know I don't know it all kind of 
It all kind of comes together. <laughs> <laughs> there was one last question, I think. Yes. Uh, if we uh, measure the increment of proportions, do we want more proportions? Or oh, oh yes, 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 yes. So that, right, as I talked with the students, exactly. Yeah, so they, yes, they, they do reduce those. Yeah, and that's what's really nice is we have, uh, uh, so I built a gate laboratory at, at Harvard Medical School and then also at the University of Virginia. And, um, and then with people in labs all over the country, it's, it's usually never a problem. Like, hey, can you run this? You know, can you run this batch through and see what see what happens? So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much.